Right, before we continue with the review, there has been a little bit of a mix-up. The one in, I showcased in the showroom is actually a GLX variant. It's still Auto Hub Limited Edition, by the way. The one I drove actually was the GLS variant, so I got a little bit confused there. I noticed also in the one in the showroom, it had no LED turn signal lamps, no fog lamps, and the steering wheel was a little bit harder than usual. But those were all in the GLS variant, the one I drove, the gray one. I was just reviewing all the footage and then I noticed like, how come the one I drove had all of those? And the one in the showroom did not have it. it. Just turns out it was the GLX Ryan. So apologies for the mix-up. Let's continue with the review. So hello guys, welcome back to my channel. And yes, finally I am driving a Mitsubishi Mirage G4 GLS CVT. But this particular one is an Auto Hub Limited Edition. I'll get on what the Limited Edition is in a bit. And yes, the 2022 model has the updated fascia. I like this, by the way. If I were to get one, I might just matte this out in black. Although, I wish they brought in the one with the red accent somewhere here in the grill. Yes, this was the last car to have the updated Mitsubishi Dynamic Shield design. And yes, I like this also on the front bumper. You have a little flap here, I guess. I don't know what you call it. And then there are no fog lamps on this, by the way. And then the lights here are all halogens. We don't get LEDs yet. And then ground clearance is surprisingly one of the highest in class, if not mistaken. It's 170 millimeters. It's a simple looking sedan. It's like most of the competition of the subcompact sedan category. You have your turn signal lights here and then one continuous line here that stretches all the way here to the rear tail lights. The rear, actually the same set of tail lights like the pre-facelift model. There's a chrome here by the way. It's it's not too much but it's, it's, it's fine for me. And then you have reflectors here on the each side. And then you have a diffuser here in the back. And there's actually a tow hitch if you can see. Since this is an Auto Hub Limited Edition, you got blacked out diffuser, black wheels. I do like the black wheels by the way. And then you have a blacked out yes. roof. Yeah, it's a simple looking subcompact sedan. I don't mind the looks at all. I love the rear now by the way, compared to the pre-facelift model. So with that it, I'll show you the interior. Oh. So this is the interior of the Mitsubishi Mirage G4. Majority of the upgrades of the Mitsubishi Mirage G4 is mostly the exterior. Throughout the interior, it's mostly the same. I like the seats also by the way, but this is something new. This 7-inch infotainment system now supports Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. That is a very big addition to this Mitsubishi Mirage. But sitting here, yeah, it's your standard subcompact sedan. This is what I like as well with the Mitsubishi Mirage, the fabric seats. Yeah, it may be fabric, but it's still comfortable to sit in, nice bolstering for me, for my stature, by the way. There's a lot of plastics and gloss black, you can't get away with that, but it's fine. Yeah, even this one, I was expecting this to be leather, but then again, no. And you have a bottle holder and a cubby space on each side of the door. And then here in your steering wheel, very simple only. You have your volume controls here on the left side. And then you have your buttons for your phone connectivity. Yes, the sting is hard. At least the steering wheel has some squeeze to it and then the right side is black, but it's fine. It's just a simple layout here with your analog speedometer, analog tachometer, and a digital display on the right, I guess. I'll know later when I drive. And then here on the left side, you have your air conditioning vents, airplane style. It's nice. That's actually a nice sounding air conditioning vent. And then below the air conditioning vent, yeah, there are a lot of long buttons. There's three of them. And these are your adjustments for the side mirrors. Is there, there's not even a storage compartment here on the left side. It's wrapped in gloss black here and there. It's fine. At least you still have physical knobs for your climate control. Yeah, it's very easy to use. And then you have a 12 volt socket below here. I'll demo this as well later when I get to dive it. Then you have a cubby space here. Okay, yeah. It's a, it's a light for a phone and then you have a oh at least you have one USB port here and then you have two cup holders at least unlike in the Honda City there is somewhat a bit more space than the Honda City that I drove last week you can at least fit here bigger bottles and contains at least but just watch out for the space though and then here another cubby space that is a lot and then glove box Okay, that is massive as well. Not bad. I like this design is actually part of the cubby space as well here. Look, that is actually a nice touch. I know this is supposed to be a low gear, but I don't know why they call it B. I'll try it out later. They have a gated shifter here with a silver trim here. 
also not but squeeze on the gear lever and then here in the center you have your manual handbrake and then one cup holder only in the back you will fight a lot by the way here in the back light here and then visor you have a vanity mirror i can't open it wrapped in plastic nope but it's fine at least the headlining is good enough the material so that's about here in front i'll show you the back so this is the back the mitsubishi mirage g4 the door cards almost same setup in front a lot of plastics here and there no cubby space or bottle holder whatsoever but you have your speaker set up here at least they kept that feet room leg room and then headroom is actually pretty decent the headroom yeah i think have um lean back okay just have that much i'm 5'4 by the way but my knee room and egg leg room is excellent also i noticed behind the driver's seat there's no seat pocket but on the right side you have a small seat pocket but at least there is but it's only here okay the transmission tunnel there's a little bit of humps i would say it's not like a flat design so it's about that tall only so if i sit here in the middle it is a bit in the way but at least you can put your feet up okay my headroom now is a bit eaten up i have that much space now because and also since this sitting here in the middle the seats a bit elevated but still comfortable to say this i like this fabric seat not that much toys here in the back but at least you still have isofix anchor points on each side and then you have a central armrest yeah little bit flimsy but at least there is and then you have two cup holders and then also i notice here you have tethering points on each side now I show you the boot. So this is the boot of the Mitsubishi Mirage G4. You can open the trunk using the key fob or a lever there on the driver's side in the floor. So open it up. You have 450 liters of space. It's not the most spacious in class but it's still very spacious enough as you can see. That's literally it here in the boot besides your light here on the right side and then underneath. You have a full size spare tire at least. I noticed the tank is so light, like look. So with that it, I'll show you the engine. So this is the engine of the Mitsubishi Mirage. It's still the same from the facelift model. It's a 1.2 liter naturally aspirated three-cylinder engine that produces 77 horsepower and 100 newton meters of torque. It may be not the most powerful in its class, but it's definitely one of the most fuel efficient. So I wonder how, how this will compare against with the competition with my driving style, of course. So with that it, let's go for a drive. Wait, before we have a drive, I just noticed something. Yes, the car is red, right? Look at the engine bay. It's like they didn't finish painting it. Is this a mirage thing? I don't know. I mean, look at that. Something I noticed only. Alright, let's go. Also, what's cool with this new mirage is keyless entry. Of course, you have to unlock it by yourself, but it's still nice to have. Okay, this is how you change the multi-information display here in the middle. You just press this on the right. There's no digital display here on the right. But when you start the engine, there. You actually, there's an econ meter here also on the right side. Okay, reverse camera. It's decent enough. It's not too bad though. The aircon in here is so freaking cold. I love it. I will lower it down because it really is freaking cold. Yeah, that camera is not the best, but at least there is. Now let's go for a drive. So driving the neutral. <laughs> so driving the all new 2022 Mitsubishi Mirage G4. Okay, it is slow. Let's get that out of the way. But for some reason, I am enjoying driving this thing. I think this is probably one of the easiest cars you can drive. This is what Mitsubishi aimed in the first place for first-time buyers who want a well-equipped enough uh, sedan. Actually, that's not bad, the performance. Although, yes, it's not the most powerful in its class, although it is one of the lightest. This weighs just around 905 kilograms. This is the trump card of the Mitsubishi Mirage, the fuel efficiency. And here, the turning radius. This will pass, obviously. I love this thing, it's so light. It's so easy to throw around. 
finally happy that I got to drive this uh, Mitsubishi Mirage because usually I always sit there in the back and yes I understand now why for first time buyers they say this is one of the easiest cars to drive and I completely agree with them and for the enthusiasts like me um, of performance oriented driver yeah it's actually not too bad yes it's slow in a straight line actually soju managed 0 to 60 kph in 7.6 seconds i think the official time of 0 to 100 kilometers per hour is 13.3 or 13.6 seconds yes this is filipino made i saw their ap spec in soju cars reviews 13.6 seconds 13.6 seconds is not too slow for me that's actually still all right it's actually the 15 seconds below that slower thing anyway i would definitely consider one for my friends or family actually have a few friends who want to buy this because it's a good first car and then let's try acceleration pickup of the cvt is not too bad i would say the brakes in general feel strong there's a little bit of travel but a high bite feeling it's it's good enough i even forgot this was a cvt and yes, the CVT is actually alright, responds well to my throttle inputs. But I'm curious what to try with this B mode. The low, the low gear. Actually, I tried it earlier. It kind of feels like sport mode already. Steering wheel, the feel with it, there's good enough weight. It's like right smack in the middle of the competition. It's just right. On the standstill, yes, this is a three cylinder engine. You notice a bit of a shudder with the standstill. Maybe this is still cold since I was. Uh, this is the first test drive of the day. Yeah, B mode look. Actually, it responds a bit better in B mode. So if this is falling around, I'm actually alone with this car. Yeah, the D mode, yeah, it, it kind of imitates an automatic transmission, which is not bad. But when you put it in B, it just responds a little bit better. It doesn't hesitate at all when you put it in B. I just want to chill with this car. Just leave it in D. NVH, okay. I can hear a little bit here and there, but it's still decent enough. I'm going here, Doris Bums here in BGC. Still comfortable. And then there's a little bit of rough patch. I'll get to the rough patch. Actually, I'm going there right now. The suspension is a bit firm, but there's a little bit of suspension travel, so it kind of gives it a bouncy, floaty feeling. It's not too bouncy, but it's just right, as I said. And yes, despite this having the same engine and transmission for the previous generation, uh, I don't mind they didn't update it because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, it's all right. Look, low speeds, 30, 40 kph. Yeah, despite being a CV, it's so dead quiet in here. And then here, the rough part. Let's try and just give it a bit challenge to put in B mode and then go over the rough patch. Okay, yes, there's tire noise, but you can actually hear the pumps in the cabin. But it's not too bad. It's decent enough, the NVH. Also, this three-cylinder, yes, it's not your aspirated. It's, it, it sounds good, at least. Hold on. Let me stop for a while. And then accelerate. That doesn't sound too bad at all. And I understand now why these cars were so popular. As Filipino switch speed, tipid as... F there. <laughs> That's all I can say. So I'm doing 19 liters per 100 kilometers. I know that can go lower. I know that can go lower. I'm trying my best to do it. Yeah, despite being CVT and naturally aspirated T-cylinder engine, there's good, there's surprisingly good amount of low end torque. Of course, you will definitely feel it when you put it in B mode. Would I want one? No. But I want the hatch. I wish this facelift had the hatch version. So far, the sedan's been released. I wouldn't mind having one as well. If was, this was my first car, actually, we kind of almost got one. But we ended up getting our Stradas. Watch my review of the Mitsubishi Strada and check out why we ended up picking that instead of the Mitsubishi Mirage. But I was so close on getting one of these. The hatchback, by the way. I mean, it was a good starter car. We, we kind of cross-chopped it against the uh, Toyota Wigo, but my dad didn't make any move yet that time. But for some reason, we just ended up having our Mitsubishi Stradas. I would have been happy either way. Although you can still get a manual for this Mirage. I almost forgot. Yeah, I, I still wanted the manual, no matter what. I can, I'm, I'm very curious now on how the manual will drive, though. Yeah, I know I'm biased with the manual, but this CVT is not bad. If my dad got me a CVT, I wouldn't mind at all. I do like the Auto Hub Limited Division just a bit because of the black wheels only. But uh, knowing they're free of charge, I would definitely option them in. 
I was expecting them to charge 10,000 pesos more, but no, it's free of charge. I would definitely do it because of the wheels alone. <laughs> okay, I finally did it. I've managed 17 liters per 100 kilometers. I just put it on screen what that is. I know this is this 6.8. I'm confused, sorry. I'm not very good at math. But I know that's a really efficient. With my driving, I'm heavy footed as usual. And here being BGC, just light traffic only. And again, heavy footed most of the time. I wanna thank Miss Isai, Miss Diane. Their contact details will be in the description down below. As well as the address of Mitsubishi BGC. I wanna thank as well Autohub Group, Mitsubishi Autohub BGC for allowing me to review the all new 2022 Mitsubishi Mirage G4 sedan. So hope you guys like and subscribe and I will see you with more future car reviews. Bye bye. Also happy Valentine's Day to all. I know this would be published a little late but still happy Valentine's Day to all. Bye bye.